Good morning, brethren. I've never been to a renewal, and I just want to say that is above and beyond what I ever expected, but I'm not surprised because that's the way God works. <laughs> Before I begin the testimony that I prepared, I would like to thank the Lord for allowing my mom to be here to witness this. She may not realize it yet, but the Lord brought her here. She lives in Springfield like I do, but she drove from Kansas City this morning from visiting her sister who just had surgery, and she, ex she extends herself forth. She sacrifices her comfort for others, including me every day. And I see that this is a characteristic that is rare to find in the world today. <clears throat> I care for her so much, and I'm overwhelmed with joy that she is with us this morning. I hope my testimony blesses all the brethren here, but her as well. I hope to speak clearly for her to understand these things that I say, and that the Lord should give me grace to speak and soften her heart to the truth and spark an interest in her and also provoke encouragement and strength to everyone here and on live stream and on MP3 as well. <clears throat> I wanna share a little bit about myself. First, I was born and raised in a Catholic family whom I love dearly, and I completed every grade through the Catholic school. Even though I have different beliefs now, I don't regret once being part of the Catholic religion. It is not where I belong now, but it brought me here. So it is where I belonged then, and it was ultimately God's plan for me. Also, before coming to Christ, I would never have spoken before a group of people. It's not my biggest strength, and I get excited to share now. I know it's the Lord working in me to bring me up here right now. I also knew very little about scripture before I started my walk in Christ. I was exposed a little through my schooling, but it was never preached to me, never opened up to me before. And what I would read, it never made sense until recently. What I was facing before coming in Christ was my lack of knowledge in the word, and that blocked the truth from my mind. I was under the impression that the Bible was written for people that lived a long time ago, not for this present time. God tells us through Paul in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction of righteousness. This tells us very clearly how crucial it is to know that the, what the Bible tells us and how wrong I was. As a true child of God, you should fill your mind with the provisions of God's word. So I get excited to share scripture throughout my testimony that has helped me understand certain events I have experienced. And I hope this is somewhat of an exhortation for everyone as well as a testimony. Before coming into Christ, I knew of this certain verse that I'm going to share with you first. It's interesting that certain things like this were retained in my mind. I view it as a seed that was planted in me at that time and producing fruits now. I really liked this certain scripture text then, but since I have a deeper knowledge on what it truly means, I have grown to love it and study it even more and apply it to my walk with Christ. For we walk by faith, not by sight. This is a very commonly used scripture text in the world that I want to share and can be found in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. Paul also tells us before this in verse 6 that while we are home in the body, we are absent from the Lord, and this causes us to need faith. Since we are not with the Lord yet, we are not able to see him in a physical sense. We may be absent from him right now, but we can see him in a spiritual sense. 
only with faith and only through Jesus Christ. So keep your eyes fixed on Christ so you can see him. Then in verse 8 and 9, the following text, he tells us that we are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore, we labor that, whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. We can be confident because we have our spirit that God gives us to guide us. Jesus dying on the cross and bearing our sins allows us to have this. And we have, we have to labor to be accepted of the Lord and stay righteous without living in sin by letting our spirit guide us. With that said, anything not done in faith is sin. Our sins caused pain and torture to Jesus, but also caused God to look away from his only son and offer him up as the lamb to die on the cross. So when we sin, it shows our lack of love for Jesus and ultimately God at that moment. It is the greatest offense and should not be taken lightly as the world and as I used to. We can rejoice because as believers, it is in our nature not to live in sin for the law is written on our hearts. We are not under bondage of the law. Actually, we are free men. We are free to be righteous just like what is said in Galatians chapter 3, verse 11 through 12. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident, for the just shall live by faith, and the law is not of faith, but the man that does them shall live in them. I have learned God does not consider you righteous just by following his law. If you are living with faith, you are righteous by nature. To be faithful refers to being a believer. The way we live determines if we are believers. To, this, to the world, this text, we walk by faith, not by sight, can be shallow. I was a part of the world not long ago and had heard this scripture and always thought it meant I just had to be strong. It doesn't really mean that. That is a thought without faith in the Lord. To a believer, it has a lot of depth and meaning, which I have realized through experience and by being tested in my life. I have been tested through my entire life, and I had failed every time. I didn't even know when I was being tested. I just sinned without any thought to it. My mind was not at work for the Lord. I had a lazy mind. When you are without Christ, you are not sensitive to sin. Your heart is hardened so it won't bother you, and therefore your faith is gone. To have faith means you have to labor and work. One of these works is to become sensitive enough to recognize when you are being tested so you can act accordingly. In turn, this will strengthen your faith as you overcome each test and then keep running without becoming weary no matter what test or trial comes our way. We have to remember that the Lord is merciful to his children and does give us times of rest between these trials. In this most recent year of my life, I have been an overcomer. I came to Christ out of darkness almost exactly one year ago when I was baptized into Christ. In darkness, I never found rest. I never saw mercy. I was faced with relentless trials that I was failing at and becoming weary, not because I was struggling to try not to sin, but because bad things kept happening to me. I recognized that I was failing. I recognized that I was starving from something. I was facing eternal death. It was then I recognized that I needed a savior and I started praying for the Lord to open up to me. I prayed for days on end, and he heard my supplications. He hears our pleading, brethren. Amen. I was led to the fellowship here after getting in touch with Brother Levi, which in turn led me to Jesus Christ, the Savior. If I were to ever doubt any of my current beliefs and the truth, 
that I have been exposed to here, I would be doubting the Lord. This fellowship is what he gave me. I didn't just stumble in here accidentally. The Lord opened up this door and light came beaming out. I was attracted and I still am. We are pulled to be here by the work of the Lord in us. I heard the true word of God for the first time in my life at the age of 32. And I found the word is refreshing. It has cleansed me and fed me. And I can read the same scripture every day. And it is always refreshing like an ice cold drink on a hot day. This is because it's living. We can hear the word over and over and it never gets useless. So I began to repent. Now I had no idea what I was doing because I had never heard the word repent before until Brother Levi sat next to me while I was crying one day. And when I was realizing I needed Jesus and he told me I was repenting, I was soon on my way to becoming sanctified. I began to understand the gospel, which is the word of God I began to understand Christ and that he is the Lamb of God and the Word made into flesh. We are told in the Gospel according to John chapter 1, verse 14, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. My faith was growing stronger, and the Lord began to give me strength. And I began to, began to overcome trials successfully. God sent all of you to me to encourage and help guide me. That shows me the Lord working through all of you. You are all gifts from the Lord. Now with the joyfulness and, and peacefulness received from being in the presence of the fellowship, I have also found that there are constant disturbances that can cause weariness and discourage the spirit when we go out into the world. This weariness is from battle. I find this at my workplace a lot. The music that is played, the people talking in the next room, and even the patient sitting in my chair. I have even had coworkers approach me testing my Christian beliefs in an offensive way. Brother Levi reminded me that they remembered me as a different person a year ago. They remember my old man. I get questioned a lot and treated differently because they realize I'm a new creation. It causes me to work hard and press on just to get through the day. These disturbances are actually works of Satan. I have come to find that Satan is real just as God is real. God gives us gifts and Satan gives us temptations and it takes work to purge our minds of these disturbances. So I wake every morning and use some more gifts that the Lord has given us, a sword, a shield, and armor. The sin in this world acts as darts on our minds and can actually become contagious just as a virus and eventually cause eternal death. Satan brings eternal death. God brings eternal life. The devil uses our minds for trickery. Satan can put thoughts in our minds and can tempt us to stray. That is why we were told in Ephesians, and I cling to each morning, these verses. It's quite a few, so <clears throat> here we go. <laughs> Chapter 6, verses 11 through 19. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness in this world, against spiritual wickedness, wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take to you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, 
and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereto with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. And for me, that utterance may be given to me, and that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. Right here, we are being told how to walk by faith. Walk with your armor on. Recently, Brother Levi and I have had to make some decisions that can seem overwhelming to the flesh. Once we crucify that and make our decisions with the Lord involved, we had some answers revealed to us. We have recently bought a new home, and I prayed that the Lord would provide us with a home that would help us serve him and stay close to the brethren. We came across a home that would be able to give all six of us a comfortable place to rest in the Lord, no more trying to dwell in the house we were in, which can be distracting to the spirit and can be a discouragement. We looked at this home with a realtor just once and knew this was our home the Lord wanted us to have. The rooms provide our family comfort, but also allow brethren to come be with us. As we walked through this home, Sister Taylor opened a door and on the wall of the family room revealed scripture. We walk by faith, not by sight. <laughs> I hope that whomever placed that scripture there is a believer. But as I saw it, and I'm a believer, it provoked me. As we put this house under contract, we ran into some trouble in further purchasing the home. Sister Nikki called us and gave us words of encouragement, and we pressed on. I knew that this is where we were supposed, what we were supposed to do. I had faith the Lord would give us this home if it was meant to be ours. With some prayers of the brethren, we were guided properly, and we now are in our home. God directs us where we are to come to, where we are to go, or sometimes stay put. Then our spirit guides us. The Lord opens doors. When that door opens, go forth. In every decision we make, and in every thought that we have, in every single word that we speak, it must be done with the Lord on our mind. Don't let your mind get lazy. In buying this house, I realized how something just like buying a home can cause you to sin. If you do it without God, you sin. You can become prideful and greedy, thinking, I got this house for myself, on my own. That's wrong thinking. Another event has occurred recently, and I have been overflowing with joy by witnessing my 15-year-old daughter coming to Christ. I saw the light just flip, flip on within her. I was praying for this months before it happened. She listened to the gospel and heard the word and she began to understand. And she was soon sanctified. After, after her baptism, she faced many tests and temptations just as Jesus faced in the wilderness. And I witnessed how crafty Satan became with her. His trickery was very subtle. God gave me the wisdom to help guide her and minister to her through certain situations. This wisdom did not just grow overnight within me. So I know the Lord waited until we were both ready for her baptism. She has been a great encourager to me, just as all of you, brethren, have been great encouragers to me. Every one of you in your own different way. I would have experienced eternal death without this fellowship showing me Christ. I came out of the clutches of Satan and I became part of the fellowship. So I encourage everyone 
for us to keep our armor on and walk with faith and run with confidence and know that when we grow weary, we are provided rest. Every time we meet, it provides rest and builds us up to go back out into the world. And I thank God that these meetings we have are of many and they are lengthy, but that is what we need. That's what it takes to rest from this world and I'm always running to get back here. The Lord is merciful, but don't backslide and give in to sin for it will harden us. If we do confess and become sensitive and plead for forgiveness, for he may not see us fit to deserve forgiveness. So we must weigh it heavy on our heart so that you will not sin that sin no more. And when you become discouraged, pray and ask the brethren to pray for you and take your troubles to Jesus. Thank you, brethren. <laughs>